I want to get a feel for the room. How many of you here know who I am and what I do precisely? Please do raise your hands. Thank you. Just about half the room. Very good. Now, let me give you some context for those of you who don't know who I am. Eight years ago, I had one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. I was in university studying accounting. It was, it was, thank you. It was, no, no, don't clap. It was a horrible experience. Um, uh, the, the degree was called Commerce and Law, and it was a five-year degree. Four and a half years into the degree, imagine you're there. I come home, my parents are in the lounge room. I come home and I say the following. I say, Mom, Dad, I love you uh, very much. It's, it's taken me four and a half years to build the confidence to tell you this. I love you. I'd like to quit university. Asian parents love their degrees. So at this point, my mom starts strategically crying. And when my mom cries, my dad automatically gets pissed off. <laughs> so dad, I kid you not, my dad walks up to me. He rolls up his sleeves and he, does, he rolls them all the way up and he goes. So for those of you who don't know, that's what Bruce Lee does before he kicks your ass. <laughs> right. so, so at this point, you know, you recognize the signs of danger. And I said, dad, don't, don't, don't do it. Just wait. There's one more thing I need to tell you. Dad, do you remember that investment property you bought in 2001? And you said it was for me, for me, for me, for motivational purposes. Commercial Law 1 and 2 stated it was a verbal contract. It's come the time I'd like to sell it. Use $100,000 of your money to build a business on the, on, 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 on the internet to, um, to teach magic tricks. <laughs> yeah. Just, and just to make sure we're all on the same page, just for a second, I just told a 60-year-old Vietnamese man who's been through the wars on a boat for two weeks to find a new home to give this son of his an education, this son just told him he wanted to be Harry Potter, <laughs> right? So my dad gets so angry, he doesn't know what to do with himself. He looks at my mom who's crying for real now. So he freaks out, he walks over, he picks her up, and then they both walk into the kitchen. And you must understand, at this point, I'm thinking, why the kitchen? I do not understand why. Oh, right, knives. <laughs> And I, I don't panic, I try to be calm, but then they whisper, and it freaks me out. And my imagination goes wild. I'm like, what are they saying in there? And this is what I'm thinking Dad's saying, something along the lines of this. Don't worry, honey. Don't worry, we kill this boy tonight, okay? Don't worry, okay, honey, tonight. We make another one, okay? Okay, don't worry. Okay, don't worry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not even a joke, but thanks for laughing. <laughs> my, my brother was then born as a result. Uh, my brother and I are complete night and day, complete opposites. Uh, didn't do very well in high school, F-City. My brother, straight A's. In Australia, they call them A-20s, perfect A's. It's disgusting, nauseating. <laughs> and, 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 and get this, now my brother is in university. He's in university now, studying medicine. What a jerk. <laughs> so for a long time, I think my mum and dad felt like they had one son, my brother. But you know, I want to tell you what my mum and dad said when they came out, because they, they blew my mind. Very difficult to blow a magician's mind, mind you, but they do. And you have to know one thing about my dad as well. He's, he's the oldest of seven brothers. And uh, that's them right there. Dad's the one right in the middle in the black suit. Handsome, I know. The looks didn't generate past the next generation. It's <laughs> tragic. But the crazy thing is he was one of the oldest brothers that made the decision to flee Vietnam, to leave everything behind, to try to find a new home for the children who weren't even born yet. He's a pretty cool leader like that. So my dad comes out, and he says to me, he goes, he goes, boy, I did not risk my life I did not risk the lives of all your uncles and all your aunties, especially your mum and your grandparents. I didn't risk everybody's life to find a new home than to force you to do something you did not want to do. I tried to find a new home to give you the opportunity to do what you love. And if it's magic, son, that's okay. And then the most beautiful words he said then followed. He said, boy, in this life, in this life of yours, boy, you must jump as high as you can, and as long as I'm alive, son, I'll forever be your net.
Thank you. So I test the theory. I, I'm going to hell for sure. <laughs> Every single time I fail, my dad reminds me the ancient old wisdom that failure is not a, it's not a destination, it's just a detour. Every single time my lawyer buddies now who finished and are lawyers and accountants would outcast me, my mum reminds me that, son, this adversity you're going through is the training required to become great. And every single time, I needed an extra two and a half thousand. <laughs> he was there. Charged me a ridiculous interest rate, should have just went to the bank. My friends, I begin with this story because I'm so fundamentally aware I would not be who I am. I would have never achieved any of the things I've achieved in my life if it wasn't for the sacrifices my mum and dad have made and those before them. And I, oh, thank you. Thank you. And I believe the same is true for you. You would not be where you are if it wasn't for the sacrifices your mum and dad have made and those before them. So can we clap it up for our families? I know what you're thinking, did you sell the investment property? Yes, we did, never lost so much money in, so quickly in my life. And that gave birth to Encyclopedia of Magic. And this is the online magic business where we teach magic online. And the crazy thing is, just recently, we've actually merged with another large online magic business called 52 Cards. And collectively now, we have just over 800,000 students from all over the world. It's one of the reasons why we're awarded with Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Dad's got two sons again. I'm back in the game. <laughs> in your face, younger brother. But you see, the wonderful thing about building Encyclopedia of Magic, joining with 52 cards, and gradually being able to win this award, was that I started to learn so many wonderful lessons that changed my life. And today I want to share with you three things that have completely changed my career as a speaker, and I know I can help you too. The only difference is that I do use magic as my metaphor. So I will be bringing some of you on stage. Uh, please, if we could just get one thing clear. If you look away, I can still see you. <laughs> and on that note, I need five people. I've been watching you as much as you're watching me. When I point to you, please do join me on stage. Please don't resist, makes it rather awkward for you. So first lady in the lovely white jacket, number one, if you could join me, please, on stage, please. Come on stage, one, and I'll like number two, that's you there. Number three, the gentleman in that striped shirt there, the lady with the behind in the red with the sunnies on top, that's four. And five, where are you? The lady just in the white and flowery shirt there with the glasses looking down. Yes, it's you. Please give these five people a big round of applause. Thank you. Good. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on stage. Nice to meet you. I forgot to get you to stand right here. The game we're going to play is called Truth or Lie. And it's very important you hear the instructions, my friends. I'll show you the cards. And in a moment, what I'm going to get you to do is, all the cards are different. And it's a very simple game. I'm just going to wrap the rubber bands around the cards. I want you to hold the cards in a moment very close to your chest. Lift the cards up. The first card you see is the first card you remember. Does that make sense? Don't think of the 10. It'll be too easy. Okay? Don't think of it. Too easy? Go for it. And please don't look at each other's cards. Lift up one card. Have a quick look at it. Once you've got it, pass it to the next person. Say to yourself over and over and over and over again, please don't forget this. If it's a picture card, remember it. If it's a number card, remember it. Please don't forget it. Because if you did, the trick would be crap. So thank you. <laughs> Rather important. And if, once you've done this, pass it here. Good. You see, the situation now is each person on stage has a card in their mind. None of us in the room, including me, know what it is. Our job is to find out. So we're going to ask a series of questions to find out. However, it's called truth or lie, because you could decide to tell the truth or a lie. It's up to you. Sometimes lie. Make it more fun. OK, so I'll try this. Uh, hands behind the back, slightly dishonest, I would say. He's probably going to lie. Very dishonest. First question is, was it red or black? Red. Good, thank you. Was it red or black? Red. Red or black, sorry? Red. Thank you, very good. Was it red or black? Black. Good, red or black? Red. And... Black. Haven't asked you yet, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's very good. And was yours odd or even? Slightly, slightly confused. Do you know what this means? It means it's a, probably a picture card, and she's like, yes, and it is. The smile gave it away. Good. So, 
I think I know what yours is, so that's easy. Was yours odd or even? Odd. Red or black? Sometimes hard to remember lies, isn't it? Yes, okay. <laughs> we'll stay there. Was yours a five? No. Truth. Okay, the shoulders tend to give it away. Hunching of the shoulders. Was yours a... A nine? No. Was it a three? No. Was it a five? No. Whoa. You're very good at, very strong. It'd be very scary to be in a relationship with you. You're very... Just, yeah, just no means no, Vin. I'm... You're very good. Could you face the audience, please? I'm going to name the cards from ace through to king. If your card was a six, which none of them are, but if it was a six, as I get closer to the six, you'll do something to give it away. Most go slightly constipated in the face. Yeah. So if we get the camera fixated on the five, please, and face the audience so it creates more pressure, obviously. Keep, don't look at me. Starting from ace, two, three, four, five. What? That was a lie. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Thank you very much for that. I will name five cards. Please do not react if you hear your card. Please do not react. Two of hearts, seven of clubs, jack of clubs, queen of diamonds, ace of spades. If I named your card, walk back to your seat now. Do not lie. No lying. Big round of applause for the five. Thank you very much indeed. Good. My question, my question to you immediately after this trick is, who here in this room believes they can come on stage and perform this trick right now? Please raise your hands. Please raise your hands. Less than 1% of the room, if that. Why is the next question. There's a knowledge gap. I know how it's done, and you don't. So why not close this knowledge gap in the spirit of being here at NSA? And I will close this knowledge gap and teach you how this is done, not to reveal magic, but rather to help reveal your full potential. And if we could just get the, uh, the camera to zoom in, please, on me. I'd like to show you these cards. I think you'll find them quite peculiar. Every single five cards are the same. Two of hearts, seven of clubs, jack of clubs, queen of diamonds, ace of spades. How do you like me now? Now, 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 here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Immediately now, one minute after I showed you the first time, what if I asked you now, who here believes if they took a risk, they could perform this trick? Raise your hands. Look around, look around. What changed? Knowledge. But can you see how knowledge directly impacts our beliefs? A minute and 27 seconds ago, you believed, no one believed it could be done, no one believed they could do it. A minute and 27 seconds afterwards, you all of a sudden believe it could be done. Knowledge changes our beliefs. But why is this belief thing so important? Because our beliefs dictate our actions in life. My friends, last year, I was here at NSA as a participant, as, as someone sitting right in the back corner, had blonde hair, I looked like a Yakuza from Japan. No wonder everyone avoided me. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, I sat there in the back watching the speakers here on stage in awe, thinking to myself, I can't do that, that is impossible. I'm just a bogan from Australia, that cannot be done. But then I went out to the breakout sessions. I sat in on the general sessions, and my beliefs transformed. I went from thinking it was impossible to within three days believing it could be done. I was sent back into my world, taking action that has led me to where I am today. Thank you. And just like that nursery rhyme in the children's book, if I can do it, you can too. The next thing I'd like to share with you, something I hold very deep to my heart, I need a very specific person so please do join me on this. Please, got to get everybody in the room to think of a number between, say, 1 and 10. Just get it in your head nice and clear. If you're thinking of the number 7, please stand. Please don't lie. Please stand. Thank you. Good. The people who are thinking of the number 7, you are still in the game. So I need you to think of another number between 1 and 10. Not, not 7, but get one that feels right for you, okay? And if you're thinking of the number 3, stay standing. Stay standing if you're thinking of the number 3. Look at, stay standing, look around. 
These are the most predictable people in the room. <laughs> Very good. Now, I'm just going to bring somebody up, but there's a qualifying question. The gentleman here in the green question, was it, no, what's your favorite color, nice and loud? Blue. Blue. No. Okay. <laughs> what's your favorite color, nice and loud? Pink. Oh, lovely. I might try this with you, actually. Can we give her a big round of applause as she joins me? My friends, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Kim. Kim, nice to meet you. Kim, thank you for volunteering. Thank you. Please be careful. And Kim, if you could just stand there and face me. Face me. Kim, I'm going to give you the wonderful opportunity to win 50 cents Australian. Thank you. <laughs> Worth less than it is here. Yes. Like thank you. No worries. Well, hold that coin behind your back like this, Kim, if you don't mind. Kim, it's about, um, if I could just bring my slides up again real quickly. I just need to show Kim. Uh, it's quite important she sees this. And Kim, this is about influence, so don't let me influence you. And actually, you can see my slide there, can't you? So just, it's about influence, don't let me influence you. Kim, in a moment, you're going to play with me which hand is the coin in, okay? Don't let me influence you. I'll just say one thing. Kim, in a moment, I want you to put the coin in whatever hand you want, but make sure you put it in the hand that feels right for you, okay, Kim? And then the hand you've got left, you can just leave it empty if you like. Good, so Kim, make your decision, please, if you don't mind. I won't look, and just bring your hands forward like this. Make it very secretively behind your back, so even people behind can't see, and then bring your hands forward. Can you do that for me now? Thank you. Are you happy, free choice, happy with that? Yeah. So you know what she's thinking? He's telling me to put it in my right hand. Did you hear what I said? Put the coin in the hand that feels right, and leave the hand that's left empty. But what did I say before that? Don't let me influence you. So she's thinking, bugger that, I'll put it in the left. That's exactly what she does. Could you open your left, please? Yes? Yes, that's one out of four. Good, that's good. Behind your back, Kim. Behind your back, good. <laughs> you are perfect for this, Kim. Thank you. This is, this is great. So, Kim, here's the thing. If people put it in their left hand, say you put it in your left hand, what do you think most people do now, out loud? What do you think they do? Put it right. Good. That's what you would do. That's not what most people would do. You'd put it in your right. But you don't have to do that. You just stick to what feels right, obviously. Okay? <laughs> Free choice, secretive as you can, so if the people behind that, bring your hands forward, please, if you don't mind. And Kim, this is a free choice, are you happy with it being a free choice? So she's not, she's thinking now. He said, do what feels right again. Vin is bluffing. And then it becomes a bit complex, she goes, but wait, could, 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 could it be one of those double bluffs? And she some some freaks, I'm good, no, could it be one of those legendary triple bluffs? No one, no one knows what a triple bluff is. So you know what she does at this point? She keeps it in the left. Open your left. Yes, good. That's two out of four. Good behind your back. Good. Ah, you are so good at this game, Kim. This is great. Okay. So Kim, the most statistically improbable thing most people think about is they think, I'll put it in the left four times in a row. Yes, and that's what you're going to do. So you can do that, or you can change. Okay. Because, Kim, something interesting happens to human beings. The more we go left, do you know what happens? The more we start to think, I just want to try right once. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I just want to give it a go. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. You can't get this wrong. You can only get this left. <laughs> so please make your own decision. Bring your hands forward, please. And face the audience like this. Kim, you have a choice at this point. You cross your right hand over the left or your left over the right. Oh, interesting. All the way through, all the way through, cross all the way through. I, all the, yeah, good. I'm going to show, don't, no reaction. See that top hand? The top hand is not as obvious as you see this bottom hand here. That bottom hand is what they call the guilty hand. But she's played this game before. She's played this game before. She has to, this time, put it in the right. Could you open your right, which is the top one? Yes, it was! Thank you, Kim. Good, 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 good. Okay, this is fantastic. Um, Kim, yes. because you're so good at this, for the last one, I'm just going to tell you what you're going to do. Okay, so, Kim, it is absolutely inevitable. You will put it in the right. So catch me out and put it in the left. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So, but it's free choice. Yeah. Make a decision, bring your hands forward. <laughs> the people behind, you cannot see what hand she puts it in, is that fair? So could I just get you to turn and face them for a moment? You see, this last one is inevitable. I've played this game thousands of times. The last one must be the left. 
Yes, it was four times. I'm so sorry, Kim. No 50 cents for you. Give her a big round of applause. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Oh, and, oh Kim, Kim, Kim. You can keep that. Good luck. Thank you. Big round of applause. You have to ask the question, why did he do all of that? Why this nonsense? I did this to prove to you that influence is one of the most powerful forces in life. And you know, it was, it was famously said by Jim, Jim Rohn when he said, you are the direct reflection of the top five people you spend time with. And wow, that quote changed my life. Because as I sat there as a young man, I thought to myself, so what that means is that it means I can control who I become in the future by deciding who I spend time with today. And that was a big moment for me. And I, I remember telling all my magician mentors my dreams about becoming a speaker. And my magician mentors would tell me, Vin, Vin, well then before you start to speak, do the world a favor. As like a magician, you learned how to use your instruments. Now you want to become a speaker, learn how to use your instrument, your voice. See a singing teacher. Learn how to use this instrument, your body. So I did years of singing training, I did years of theatre training. I spent thousands of hours doing these things and I did not become successful and I could not understand. So I remember my, my mentor at the time, David, I said, David, I don't understand why I'm not successful at this. I don't get it. You said that if I did these things, I'd win and I'm not. He said, Vin, it's so obvious. It's so obvious, Vin. You spent all of your time with four magicians in a bunker underground who are socially retarded. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, it's very offensive, David, but it makes sense. He said, if you want to be a speaker, bring a speaker into your top five. And that, that changed it all for me. So the stalking began. <laughs> and I found this speaker, he's one of the best speakers in Australia, uh, Matthew Mihilovich. Tried to get his attention via email, everything, calls, nothing, blocked my number. You all know the deal, I'm sure. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And then what's crazy was that I believed in this lesson so much that I was the direct reflection of the top five people I spent time with. About a year and a half in, I went all out and I, I bought a thousand of his books. Uh, my wife was pissed. Yes. I sent him this photo and I said, Matthew, please, 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 I believe in what you believe. Give me 15 minutes of your time. A week later, he calls. And I knew because I had his number, right? Yeah. Yes. And I kid you not, the call went like this. It was like, ring once, Matthew. He's slightly freaked out. I kid you not, this is what he said. He goes, Vin, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> Next week, one hour. We've become best friends. I'm here on this stage because he started me on a journey that I could not start on my own. He not only influenced the way I spoke, he influenced my values and beliefs. And you know, this is another lesson that ties into NSA right here, right now. I came here not knowing anyone last year. I sat in the back, just super tragic loner. And I saw a speaker on stage, on the streets, they call him the man bun. <laughs> Otherwise known as Scott Stratton. And I watched him from the back, yes, woo! And I was, I was, I was watching from the back and I was like, that man needs to be my friend. <laughs> and I found ways to add value to Scott and we've become friends. He's changed my life. He's helped me learn the way to learn the way of being a speaker, being generous, being kind. And on top of learning from Scott, who is a wonderful speaker, I've also been able to connect with so many other wonderful speakers because of NSA. I've been able to connect with Peter Sheen. I've been able to connect with Josh Linkner, Mel Robbins, Amanda Lindhout. My friends, don't try to achieve all of this and everything you're trying to do on your own. We are better together. You're the direct reflection of the top five people you spend time with. You can choose who you become in the future by deciding who you spend time with now. Who's going to be in your top five post-NSA? I already got my next five planned. Look out. <laughs> There's one more thing I wanted to share with you. You know, being a magician, I obsess over magic. Because every time I perform magic, it creates a moment of wonder, a moment of astonishment. And I've always wished that I could recreate that astonishment and that wonder in my life, in my personal life, in my professional life. I wish that there was a way. And I tried my whole life to try to find this answer. And I've tried for years with, with no success. But then another magician had already discovered the answer to this. His name's Teller from Penn and Teller, the mute one. He actually is a very intelligent person and he speaks very well. And Teller said one thing. 
that made it all make sense. So how can you recreate what magicians can create, that experience, that wonder in your life? This one sentence ought to do it. Magic is just someone spending more time on something than anybody else would reasonably expect. Again, magic is just someone spending more time on something than anybody else would reasonably expect. Mastery is the key. The thousands of hours I spent in the theater, the thousands of hours with the singing teacher, the thousands of hours performing as a magician, the stage time, has created who I am today. My friends, there are three things today. It is knowledge that will unlock your mind. You know the next one. Do you remember it? It is the people that you spend time with that will unlock your full potential. And the final one, it is through mastery that one accomplishes the impossible. Good luck, my friends. Thank you very much.